Okay, well, welcome everyone to the second workshop. And uh, this is going to be basically telling you how to do a bit more about how to do digitalization, I think, Steve. And uh, uh, yeah. without, without further ado, uh, welcome again to Steve Dowley, and I'll, I'll hand over to you, Steve. Yeah, thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you for that nice introduction. Uh, welcome to the Smartener Factory Part 2, and that's uh, Achieving Low Cost, Low Skill, Low Risk Industry 4.0. And for those of you who were here the first time, you'll notice that I actually subtitled it How to Nail Jelly to the Wall. And I made the point that, you know, because we have those three things of low cost, low skill, and low code, how can they all happen? You know, how can you do that with, with, uh, with, with what you might think of as Industry 4.0? Well, if you start off with proper jelly uh, and you try and nail it to the wall, well, it, it's, no matter how, how many nails you put in, it slides through. So what you have to do is you have to change your jelly. And this, this chap did use some extra gloopy ballistic jelly and was able to successfully nail it to a plank and then stand the plank up against the wall. So even he didn't quite get the wall either, I guess. But there we go. But then I realized that actually what I'd done in the first video was actually say, why should I try and nail jelly to the wall? And really that's vision. That's the vision of Industry 4.0. And I think a lot of people are happy or happy-ish with the vision of 4.0. And this is, what we, this is what this series of videos is all about really, is to try and move from this vision to the actual implementation. And so the, the next, the bit that we're doing today, this is this, this video is all about the what, which essentially is the model, the business model, what, exactly is the jelly that I should be talking about fastening through the wall. And maybe this, this is how to identify the jelly. So I'm, I'm stretching this analogy a little bit, a, long, a bit of a long way, but really that's the first was the why, this is the, the how, or how to identify the jelly, I say a what jelly. And the last one is show me exactly how to nail this jelly up then. And that's the implementation side. And implementation of Industry 4.0, as you'll realize from this video, when we look at all the tools that's gonna to help us identify which jelly we're going to pick to nail to the wall, essentially our business model, the, the thing we're going to apply, Industry 4.02, you'll realize that they all tend to stop at that stage. And I want to find out or explain in this sort of video why they stop there and why it's important for us to work out what we need to do. So I'll let you read this yourselves. Uh, how many people have we got? A few? I will get a rat. <laughs> well, that's that's the very thing. Uh, uh, there, there's a good reason why I said I got took a couple of people waiting. Look, there's a good reason why I said uh, I'd like you to read it yourself because if I read it, I'll spoil the joke, of course. And it's if you read it properly, it's only one zero types of people in the world: those who understand binary and those that don't. And if I was explaining jokes, which I'm sure actually takes the rips the fun out of it, I should it should say base should have that base two at the bottom. It would spoil it, wouldn't it? I think the point is that it's maybe a poor joke, but there's a good reason for showing this one. Hi, everybody. So, so maybe it's not funny and maybe it's just poor pedagogy. All right. So, but there's more as in, in the old Frank Carson style, there's more. So I've recently turned 30. Uh, oh, well, here we go. I spoiled it already. I'm going to say 39. I should have said three nine. See if anyone picks on that one. Uh, and, and maybe a question. And um, look, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, what do you get if you take Monday from Tuesday? These are all valid questions. We'll get to get to why I'm asking them in a second. Another question. You've got an IT department. Do you have an OT department? And if you're play, playing along, um, can you remember what ICT stands for? I know it might sound like a strange question to ask people, but uh, often we forget what, uh, what ICT is, is, even though it's a well-used acronym. 1,092 to one significant figure. We want that to be just tripping off people's tongues. We've got someone with a someone with a microphone on that's not muted, by the way. And uh, arteries, red or blue, on a circulatory, circulatory system diagram. That's a very simple question, perhaps. But the point is, that's a simple question thrown in amongst a lot of other really simple questions, actually. Um, anyone got a dynamic or static IP address at home? Which one do you have, dynamic or static? Do you know? Do you even know it? Uh, okay, let's let's get to another question. There's a question here. I like coffee, but I don't like tea. I don't know if anyone's played that game. 
But it's uh, if you, I say a statement, then somebody else re responds. Well, they, they might try another statement. You can say, so I, can't, I like the moon, but I don't like the sun. And I'd go, yeah, that's correct or whatever. But the point is, there's no rules to that one. So when I say it's your turn, and this is a bit of what Industry 4 is about. And I sort of went into this in a little, little detail last time. Because Industry 4, it's like that last game. You don't really know about Industry 4.0. But there are some quite simple rules, but if you don't know them, you can't play. And that's the problem with Industry 4.0. Um, and the thing is, if you don't know these rules or at least these things, you're going to pay for somebody else's ver version of Industry 4.0. And perhaps it won't quite feel right for you or your company. And that's the issue with Industry 4.0. Definitely in Australia. And I'm, I think it'd be the same. Well, I know it's the same in Germany. and I know it's the same in uh, other countries, New Zealand, for example, as well. And I'm sure that it's the same in the UK. Uh, the point is, do you need your own rules? Well, as we're going to see later, the VDMA thinks so, and they're the German Engineering Federation. And that's the, and in fact, it's the German Engineering Federation Industry 4.0 Forum. And that's the, if you've got it, the guideline Industry 4.0, which I said, that's your homework. Just have a copy of that. And we'll be looking at that later. This will be one of our four, well, there'll be four other examples that we're going to be looking at to sort of see about industry 4.0 about the you know the how we identify the the the, uh, the 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 thing we're going to tackle so this is a summary of this presentation it's a summary it's a too long didn't read it so this time we're going to make sure that we're going to start our opinionated solution driven journey uh and that's really what we ended up with when we when we looked at uh at, at industry 4.0 last um so and what we're going to do is by identifying a real business problem or helping you as, uh, uh, and the people watching the video um, to help you identify a real business problem. And, it's, and that's the point. It's actually shouldn't be, you could say it should not be technology driven, but it should be business led. And uh, that's the, quite an, an interesting thing because we'll see technology keeps sneaking in and it becomes in some respects uh, technologically driven, but that shouldn't be the case. And we've established in the previous presentation that digitalized per se needs a strategy and that's where we talk about operational technology as well as information technology and the goal and um and that strategy the goal of our strategy is to, is to to improve our productivity and our compliance and again we'll see when we look at other models that that's sometimes not entirely expressed uh, and that's the bit about you know maybe i'm trying to teach you or talk to you about an industry four model that is a little bit different from what's given to us from the bigger players. And that's an important distinction to make. And we'll see that as we go along. So what we're trying to do is move from this vision to a business model and then to an implementation. So how do we do that? So we've stated in the first presentation that an understanding of digitalization is the, of your process is the key to industry 4.0. And that's where this concept of opinionated comes in that uh, software is opinionated, hardware is opinionated, frameworks are opinionated. And opinionation, uh, having an opinion on something is quite handy because it means that once that's been formed, you don't have to keep working out or guessing all the time about what you, you're trying to do. So, so that's the point, get an opinion about what you want to achieve and then move forward to try and achieve that. So how do you identify a real business problem? And that's where a lot of the tools that are, that are available to us as, as individuals in companies or as companies themselves or as SMEs, practitioners, how do we identify a real business problem that's got a smart enough solution? And of course, the concept that I'm trying to talk to you about is the smart enough factory where we are, where good enough is good enough. And that's the, that's the ultimate driver. So this is the overview of the what. This is part two. This is the current video. We will recap those industry 4.0 challenges and solutions. And that's what we covered in our first presentation. Um, what we're gonna do then is we're gonna identify, we're gonna briefly review uh, five resources for the implementation of industry 4.0. Um, and interestingly, we could call, I don't know if it's if it's popular to talk about Industry 4.0 as Manufacturing Systems 4.0 or MS 4.0. I think that's a very good, um, uh, a very good uh, abbreviation, by the way. 
So what we'll do is we're going to look at the Akatech Maturity Index. We've already seen the Akatech development path, but now we're going to introduce the Maturity Index. And um, these uh, a Maturity Index is, and, and it seems to be especially favorable in, uh, in Europe um, to do to find out where how mature, and it actually comes into Australia as well, um, how mature you are in your industry 4.0 thinking. And um, what that's gonna do hopefully is then once you've worked out your maturity level, um, and it doesn't quite benchmark you, I think that's, that's the other thing to get, 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 um, get straight. It's not quite a, a comparative benchmark. I think it's particularly for your organization, by the way. Um, once you have that, then you can lay out your goals. But and um, now the VDMA implementation guidelines, which is what you have, which is guideline industry 4.0, which you should have all had a look at or at least have. And I'll be referring to that. And we'll be using that to, to create an example. Uh, is another method. Then I'm going to show you the IMCRC. That's the uh, that's an Australian um, concept, the, the, the future map. And I'm going We'll see that we'll see the real deal later. Uh, but this is a this is a future map. Again, it's a little bit. It's it's where are where, where am I now, and where am I going to be in two years' time? And it's uh, the reason for highlighting that because you won't have access to that one, but you will have access potentially to the um, the Fraunhofer IFF checkup, which the future map was based around, or at least the Fraunhofer developed IM, uh, future map for the IMCRC. So it's quite a small world. And I think that's another thing I want to draw into this, that it's the same people defining the same things for different groups and sort of slicing and dicing things in a very similar manner. And then finally, we're going to do and carry out the VDMA business model. So there'll be two activities that we're going to do during this presentation. And that's going to, we're going to pick, and I'm going to, I'm going to have some involvement from the people who are watching, hopefully. Um, the attendees live who are going, we're going to try and do uh, this 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 model. Now I do understand that we've got fewer people than we maybe thought, and a lot of people watching this online. So we'll we'll just see how we get on when we come to that bit. But uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy that part of the uh, the presentation. Um, so as I said, we're going to apply this VMA, uh, VDMA readiness model to the factory in a box product, and that's the product that you saw saw before. And um, and uh, I still managed to uh, get that's after the break. And I still managed to leave it in the house because I did my arms full. But I will show I will show you that as a picture, and we'll show it live when we come to the come to the thing, come to doing the activity. All right, so let's move on. Let's uh, times times getting getting on. So we're going to be covering this one, and this is the architect maturity stages and the mature maturity index. And if we recall, we've seen this. This was the this is one of the things that we found out about uh, in the first stage, which is essentially uh, splitting industry 4.0 into uh, into a digitalization stage, which is which is essentially the foundation for industry 4.0, and then into industry 4.0 in itself. And recalling that this adaptability level here is the sixth stage, the final stage of industry 4.0, and according to uh, all sources. Um, it's not going to be here till 2020. No, no, 2020, my <laughs> 2030, I should say. Uh, but most of the things that we can do in Industry 4.0, we can actually do today. And that was just, that was a, a point I wanted to make from the previous talk was that that the factory in a box covers this computerization, connectivity, and visibility, and then predictive capacity actually because of a simple model. Um, and that these things, this le these levels here are, are actually very doable. Now, the maturity index is based on this rather complicated and rather busy diagram. Now, I'm not going to talk about it now, um, but we will do later. But this is what we're going to get our heads around, what this is trying to tell us, what this, what this is trying to capture for us. So let's move on to the next one. So this is the future map that we're going to look at. And this is um, my future map for my company, the Smart Enough Factory. So this is the real thing that I did last year, middle of last year. And it measures about 13 measures 
of where I think I am now. And this is self-assessment, by the way, this particular one. The previous one is, and this is the, um, the question, how is the index derived? Because we have this thing called the maturity index. We'll come to that later. That's the, that's the crucial part. That's a really interesting one. Uh, but the future map here doesn't give me an index, but it gives me a, like a radar plot of where I am now. This one in the middle and where I want to, where I, where I want to be in two years time. Now that's a, a, you might question why that term is, is two years, but that's an interesting one. And again, that's sort of, ba that's actually uh, loosely strongly based on the, um, very similar to the IFF checkup map, but, but delivered in a very different way. And then we have what we were looking at as our homework. And one of the reasons for using this as a basis of, you know, in a, in a meeting like this is because it is quite different from, the process is quite different from the other ones that I'm showing. And essentially it's different because we can actually, we can use it to apply it to products or our production and essentially the products are a representation of, of our external industry 4.0 capability, i.e. to our customers. And the production system is a representation of our, of our internal industry 4.0 capability. And we could plot these, and if you notice, there are one, two, three, four, oops, I'll use my mouse. For, I don't know if you can see, see my, I know you can see my cursor, but I'm not sure if you can see my mouse that I'm using on here. If anyone wants to in the chat, so let's say that now, chat, I'm going to see if I can see a chat pane. We can see uh, the, the laser pointer, Steve. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, so if I, you can't see the mouse, but if, you, if I use the laser pointer, then you can see it. We can, actually, we can see both. I, I can anyway, I can see your mouse now. Uh, okay. And okay, and if I do that, you can see a circle around it as well, it might pop in. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, so, and now, uh, thank you. Uh, now I'll have opened my chat window now, so I'm fully prepped. I'm actually fighter pilot. I'm, what was it? Um, master of my domain. <laughs> I've got my pictures down the side, my chat open, and the presentation in front of me. So thank you. So yeah. So the idea of this is that you can actually, and this is quite a nice little. This is called the. This is the toolbox. So this is the the heart of the of this document. Um, and what it does is, uh, we'll come to it properly but just a, a basic introduction we'll see this this feature here this triangle essentially if you if you're all the way on the left down here of the aspects of your product you're not industry 4.0 so you do you know you, you don't quite know the rules yet down this side if you're here then yes you're industry 4.0 mm -hmm. same with this one so that's your products this is your production now we'll come to some there might be some things that start if you've been if you have read this there's some things that you might have sussed about this that you might think is a little dodgy but we'll 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 hopefully that'll come that'll come out in in the wash as we as we go along actually but yes there there is something there's something missing in this i think significantly missing actually but the why it's missing is something that i want to sort of try and show you okay and the finally the the vdma readiness model um this is an online one and again if you recall this is actually very very similar to this to this uh to the model that we showed uh, before a little bit in the sense of um, that there's it's not 13 but there are a number of elements or factors that you can actually sort of indicate what level you are level zero to level five uh, within these bands that are established or elucidated I guess is right through through questions so that's what we're that's the the readiness model and it's how ready are you for industry 4.0 essentially where does your business stand so it's quite nice to sort of see that. Look, it's nice for, to, to know where you are, but I think the, the questions that they ask, you know, it's focused on a particular definition of industry 4.0. So let's recap from the previous presentation what those challenges and solutions were and this concept of industry 4.0. What was it, what is it really about? And I think this is quite crucial to, to actually realizing why the, the VDMA and the uh, uh, and the um, and the uh, and the um, the guidelines and the uh, <clears throat> maturity indexes are, are, are drawn or presented in the way that they are. Well, actually, the VDMA guideline, especially, I think, is is really quite telling. Um, so, in the part one, what we did was this: we we looked at the challenges 
of, of introducing Industry 4.0 into manufacturing, and especially in SMEs, <clears throat> we, we highlighted, in fact, we, we spent some time identifying why we need a new approach. The fact is that Industry 4.0 is complex, and it's a story. It's a, it's, it's a complicated story, and it sh it's sold to us as being complicated. <clears throat> it's sold to us, well, it's, it's presented as being costly, and it's costly in terms of uh, money, of course, cash, but it also costs in terms of skills and costing in terms of security, that's the, that's the thing. And, and it's been sold to us that it's actually possibly even too complicated and costly for German companies because the, there's like a limited amount of, of, um, of take up in Germany, which is essentially prompted a lot of the tools to, to, to help that. I suppose also realizing that Industry 4.0 as a whole is this 2030 vision, but we can do a lot of it earlier and that's the point of smart enough and so that's it and that's the smart enough approach and i think from the uk point of view if you've heard of or been involved with and i would encourage you to do this to, to be in, involved in digital manufacturing on a shoestring because the concepts and or the fundamental aspects of manufacturing on a shoestring are essentially a, what a smart enough approach is we're talking about modular low cost scalable hardware and that's what the, the final presentation will be on, of course, is, is the actual hardware and implementation. But that's um, getting to that point is, is, is important. And I, and I think the journey to that point is very is vital because of this smart enough approach. Now, I will talk about it a little bit more here. And I'll just say that the aim is to, um, and I haven't quite got the words yet for it. You know, there's a saying about if you, you know, teach a, teach someone to, to give them, a, you know, uh, teach someone to fish, you know, they're able to feed them with fish or you know, feed the family with fish, you know, but if you give, give them a fish, you know, that's it, that's all you've done. And I think it's, it's the simple, it's the digital equivalent of that. So if anyone's got a very smart way of uh, uh, turning that into a little saying, that'd be really good because that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to ensure that companies and individuals especially small companies can identify their own solution path to industry 4.0 and their own understanding of industry 4.0 and can then develop it because the, the the key way to take costs out is to remove the need for expensive consultancies and um, and the second way is of, of doing it is to try and avoid incorporating or using um, expensive off-the-shelf solutions um, without necessarily knowing that you're going to need the expensive off-the-shelf solution because of what we're going to find out about industry 4.0 and it's no secret but but there is a key to industry 4.0 that's that's worth worth highlighting and of course it's that it's around this it's the, the digitalization itself and we have by the way for the people listening uh, you we need to, we i might use the term digitization rather than digitalization i'd be much more correct to say digitalization but do you know what? Nobody really cares. If you say digitization, we all know that I'm talking about digitizing um, my pro or digitalizing my process. I'm not talking about um, ripping my CDs. And I talked about the journey for certain tools. I, I, in fact, we spent quite a bit of time on that, talking about the factory in a box itself and the product and about the journey. So if you haven't seen the first one, I would definitely recommend that you review the first video. So I'll get that background of the why. And then I left these gray because when we talked about Industry 4.0 last time, the point is that Industry 4.0 and getting value from Industry 4.0 adoption actually emerges from Industry 4.0. I, I won't say much more than that. And I think the last part that you get a feeling that, it, that this is an emerging act, act, activity is that it, Industry 4.0 is a journey. Um, it's a transition to Industry 4.0 and it's like lean manufacturing. And, and really that's looking back at this, at this why list, Industry 4.0 is not something you buy at a shop in a tin, for example. And if you think of it like that, if you think of it as lean manufacturing or as a, a change in your, in your attitudes of manufacturing, that's going to be the, or servitization, I should say as well, because the, the reality is, and I'm guilty myself of doing it, is that Industry 4.0 is often defined um, in a manufacturing way. And, um, 
and it's true uh, it has wide applicability but the reality is that it can be applied to the, the techniques can be applied to many many things many many services uh, smart cities um you know healthcare uh services all of them can benefit from the same type of technology but i will be giving a manufacturing bent to this because of what i'm involved with but just bear in mind that it's not entirely um manufacturing orientated so and we highlighted these challenges and this was really interesting and, and i will spend a, a fraction of a, time, a, a small amount of time on this one what this was was a um a company that identified uh, a whole uh, through questionnaires a whole series of uh, of points and these are the top five split by uh company size so this this top left section here is companies with less than 100 employees there's 100 to a thousand a thousand to five thousand and more than five thousand and when we look at this quickly not just quickly but we'll see we we all, we'll, we'll we might think that it's exactly the same issues but just 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 differently ordered that these top five ones are common so yes in in general the companies regardless of size have a common set of problems including a strategy lack of a strategy including potentially the structure of the organization including employee pushback including lack of expertise so that's where you can start to see a limited budget yes where you can start to see this concept of low cost low code low skill that's the that would address most companies issues um the the really interesting one i think to, to look at the small company end of this is this and that is there's business partners unable to support what does that mean well many many small businesses actually don't have uh you know their own it departments or their own maintenance departments it's all bought in it's all it's all um it's all um essentially external to the company and if your supplier or your integrator or your service provider is not industry 4.0 capable then it's not going to be able to pass on to you industry 4.0 skills or techniques that you want to actually embody so in a sense uh it might not be your vision that holds you back it might be your ability to source companies that share your vision and source partners to share your vision to actually take things forward and i thought that was quite interesting and it's worth i thought it was worth pointing out especially on the small company end so the point about industry 4.0 capability is that it's non-core and it's perhaps you don't have that capability that exists it's not something you make it's definitely a multi-stage journey and it's not well defined which is quite interesting to find that out but it definitely isn't and you do require a strategy and so you can ask does an sme have a strategy and well does an sme even have a vision most people will have a vision or a company will have a vision but it trend, tends to be only written down when you get to larger companies you know your mission statement on the wall you know it might be because you have other stakeholders if you know you might have to express it to your bank perhaps but the point is that you know it's possible that the strategy might or your vision of the company might not be fully expressed and a digital strategy even then is something that's slightly off the wall or slightly um you know not as not as concrete it's, it's a fairly abstract concept perhaps for people uh, and this is the bit where we're going to get to that there's there's a realization that that digitalization is just a table stake essentially it's an enabler to industry 4.0 and which means that it's essentially a cost so it costs to digitalize and it can be quite expensive but it doesn't give you any value and that's the issue that's why that that first stage is actually difficult to take so the Toyota way lean manufacturing you know just like just like that it's actually a shift in the way that that companies organize themselves perhaps as well to think about and you might even do a bit of navel gazing and think that well if it's so important about lean manufacturing and the concepts that are in in there should it actually be a prerequisite for success but let's move on let's actually talk about the industry 4.0 enterprise model and um and this is the bit that this is essentially the definition of industry 4.0 from the big players perspective we have these three tri triangles they represent enter the enterprise 
So these are their enterprises. And for our purposes, we're going to call our enterprises multi-level production systems. Our multi-level production system makes product. And with our, within our multi-level production system, oh, here, sorry, here we are, here's our products, which we're going to call devices and products in the field. And so we have a tractor, washing machine, and a pokey machine, a one arm bandit. And traditionally, data flows vertically within our multi-level production system, from at the top, our ERP system, to down at the bottom, to sensors on our equipment. And then above our sensors, we might have PLCs. Above our PLCs, we might have a SCADA interface, which is a supervisory control and data acquisition. Above our SCADA system, we might have a manufacturing execution system. And above that, we might have an ERP system. And I say might, what I've just described there is actually a model, an automation model for, for, for industry. And, it, and this automation model is the key to the German understanding of Industry 4.0. And it's the key to why your product table in your guideline industry 4.0 looks exactly like that. And that's because of this concept that it's, it seems to be a given that your organization is like this. And that's the issue that it, not all organizations are. It's very particular, I think, to Germany and to other small to medium enterprises or medium enterprises that are that operate in a high cost labor market and operate in a highly automated fashion or as much automation as possible. So anyway, the vision of Industry 4.0 is that these value chains, these vertical value chains are going to be integrated to create the, the internet of everything. And this integration takes place horizontally as well as vertically. So what happens in Industry 4.0 is that data now flows between our products and the products now are our smart products. They aren't just our dumb products. They're our products actually are industry 4.0 products. They communicate and they communicate back to the factory potentially. And then they communicate with each other through their enterprises. And these enterprises become value, uh, value chains. But of course there's people involved and perhaps the poker machine would like to know what the person's thinking. And in fact, we can maybe, in fact, the company might know what to like to know what the, what the person's thinking, who's pulling the lever on the, on the one man bandit. So, um, so now this is the future. This is, this is industry 4.0. And I'll just highlight about the complexity. This is notionally all notionally referred to as a complex framework and it's based on full integration of cyber physical production systems. And the point is that these intelligent products and the machines and the systems, they're all securely interconnected. And so you end up this concept of the internet of everything. And you find that everything cooperates, everything communicates. And the point is the final bit, this last part with minimal or no human intervention. So that's a really interesting concept. That's this future, this 2030 vision of industry 4.0. And if you read this, this is the this is whoops this is why you end up with this 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 concept that industry 4.0 is potentially you know not for me and i think that's very unfortunate because this concept of minimal or no human intervention is notionally this adaptability aim that pops out in 2030 not today not tomorrow not in but in 9 years time and again, i can guarantee you I'll eat my tea if I'm wrong, uh, that, um, that, that, uh, that 2030 number will, will shift. Might have to shift a couple of times, but one day it will be here. But the point I'm trying to get over in this course is that the majority, the high value stuff, we can do that right now. And we ought to do that right now because, and the reason what we might want to focus on is that, our productivity and our compliance that will be our goal so anyway i would just want to highlight that this triangular model is 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 real and that this is what it was uh, what it was based on i won't go into too much detail but we're here with the concept of the enterprise through work centers work units right down to equipment down here and then the industry for enhancement is this connected world above and also connected devices below and perhaps it's maybe easier to read on the left hand side this isa diagram here which looks a little bit triangular, 
but we end up with the enterprise. And so that's going to have things like our planning and scheduling software. This is our operational software and hardware. And this down here is our control systems. And you can sort of see this, this is an automation hierarchy. And that's why you end up with that in there. And so that's it. That's the big player's perspective of horizontal and vertical integration. So we talked about smart enough. So that's the point is about smart enough industry 4.0. It's for all organizations, not just automated manufacturers. We're going to talk about it from the small company perspective and not the solution provider perspective. And the point is we're going to have a focus and it's on productivity and compliance. And that's why we're going to digitalize. We're going to try and to use these tools to improve our productivity and our compliance. Now, why they use the word compliance? Well, that's because essentially one of the things about industry 4.0 is visibility of process. And once we have a visible process and data collection and data persistence, we can actually look and see if we are complying with our internal standards and potentially our, our compliance with external um, standards and, and requirements from, from our customers or from our suppliers. And so again, it's still horizontal vertical in integration of value of our value chain, but we're doing it for a particular thing. And that's why that's our strategy. So we have this digital strategy here. And if people are interested, they should do some little bit, little bit of a research that this is actually based around the joiner triangle, where the focus in the joiner triangle is on quality here. Oh, sorry. And uh, we're going to use a scientific approach or the uh, to achieve quality, and we're going to all work together to do so. And so if we take it digitally, we can sort of conceptually think of this as a, the all in one team as a single source of truth for our data. We access that data through services um, and we access it to do our, to work on the data for our data. That's, so we are really data driven in our management approach. And with our focus in doing that is that we want to improve quality, but of course we're gonna focus our quality journey on looking at improving productivity and compliance. So this is this concept of management data because once we have industry 4.0, what we can do or what, what happens essentially is that process, the processes are essentially immediately transparent to us. Uh, you know, it's near real time data for processes. That's what, we, that's what we can get. And the reason why it's smart enough is smart enough and why it's low cost is that we're gonna leave the control as in the feedback and i.e. actions to the experts and the systems that are expertise in doing that. And that's because we can look at low cost and low, co we can look at low, co low cost frameworks that will give us near real time information without the need for millisecond control. And that's, that comes at a higher cost. And we're gonna close the feedback loop through the operator or the manager. So that's the aim. Management data, quickly recap what that is. Simple but important stuff. What are my systems or machines doing right now? What's the state of them? Are they busy? Are they idle? Are they on or off? That's the lowest level of valuable information we can get from our machines. And we can use that to support our interventions in our process. You know, we can intervene in our process if it's not doing what we think it should be doing. And we can also use it for say process health. What are they likely to do next? And this is the modeling issue. Can we actually, we can use our simple model of our machines to forecast what they're going to do in the future. And so it's actually very straightforward to do that. And we can derive our utilization as well. The other thing to do is think of applying these systems, solutions, even though we're not quite sure what they are possibly, we can use the same solutions to track my assets or track your assets. And that's, and that gives us transparency and immediacy of location because it is an ERP system, an enterprise resource planning system, where we are interested in work in progress, queues and bottlenecks, but they might not expose all those because our granularity might not be high enough in our ERP system. So this is the smart enough factory. Now, again, this is the concept side of it. Where does it come in? Where does this, where does this concept come in? So what the smart enough factory is, is shown on the, on the left-hand side here with the the dashboard and XB sensing. So that's the hardware that we're using. 
uh, but they're actually at this low level area here, this production process level from the sensors and signals on our processes. And we can take data through services from other higher levels, the ERP system or the manufacturing execution system. But the point is, well, actually, I'll, I will say what's on here. It's possible that we might look at this for overall equipment effectiveness, for example, or, or a, a process, for example. And um, it actually, the point is that the that this here, the, the smartener factory is actually part of, or could be part of a manufacturing, uh, essentially what is a, a, a manufacturing execution system. But the reason I'm highlighting it like this is that and using this triangle and being very specific about it is, and feedback closed by the people, that these layers don't necessarily exist in everyone's companies, especially small companies. They might not have a manufacturing execution systems. They might not actually have a SCADA system. They might not even have an ERP system. It might all be based in Excel. People manage their companies in Excel quite successfully, including you know, rel well, relatively large, small companies might not have a dedicated ERP system. And in fact, you don't need any of those layers to actually apply the solution that we're going to finally get to in the third part, which I've highlighted before, which is the smart enough factory concept, where we're looking at putting an overlay of sensors onto existing systems and legacy systems in order to get information from those. What information? Well, this is an example from Sutton Tools, which we saw before, where this is a dashboard. It's on a large monitor. Um, we can see the machine state, the, very, the, the, the current state of our machines. They're busy, they're off or stopped. That's in a transition state. Uh, this is our forecast. These one, two, three are forecast to meet their targets in the shift. These two might fail to meet their target. We have an expected total. We, we have a target, so it's a predictive target. We have the current production quantity. We have the time stopped, which will give us our utilization. And we have the previous shift to compare to. So that's something we can do with very simple data. And this is what the, the end result, the implementation side, which we're gonna cover in our last uh, workshop. And the factory in a box is the kit that we use to teach people about Industry 4.0. We've used it in workshops in Australia and Queensland, uh, delivered it to five companies. We're about to do the same thing for other areas. Uh, in fact, we're doing it in Victoria for uh, Manu Futures in, in uh, Deakin University. So these this, this toolkit is a toolkit that embodies the same hardware that we've got embodied at uh, certain tools and, um, and other smaller companies. But essentially, it's a, it's a kit that allows you to explore. It's a pattern of Industry 4.0. So it includes all the tools. And it's a fa it's, it simulates a factory. So we have a board that represents the factory. On, in the factory, we have plant. That these are simulated machines. These, uh, these two red boards with the orange bits on them. And they are machines which make things. And they are unreliable. They run out of work. They can. They have a queue, beginning and the end. So it's essentially something that could be done as a. If you've heard of discrete event simulation, it's something that could be done with discrete event simulation. But this is actually hardware that that does this. And the reason for having it a hardware discrete event simulator, which are we don't call it that by the way. <laughs> for obvious reasons, is that we can use it to generate data that's a new bit, the bit that people aren't aware of in, in industry. So, and the data generation is, is done on the machines and it's collected by these devices, these little nodes that we add. And so we add these overlays and these are exactly the same overlays that we add onto our machines. Um, they can be modified. These are particular ones that for digital inputs, but that's, uh, that's by the by, uh, but essentially, they are, we piggyback onto existing controllers without having to interrupt the controllers. And these two devices here form a network with this third one here on what is an edge computer. Now this particular edge computer is a Raspberry Pi and it's a low cost computer. But this can be used as an edge device and it represents the factory. And then the connection to the cloud is via the network adapter and off it trots. But the point is that this is actually 
completely open for modification and configuration. And what it is, it's for industry for capability enhancement and learning. And so there's all this kit in here uh, provides the user with different levels of engagement depending on the, on, the, on the user's requirements. It's low cost and low risk to engage with and it assists in the problem of converting data to knowledge. And it's a shoestring approach to Industry 4.0. So the factory in a box is actually using the same hardware that we saw here, uh, the, uh, the output that we saw here, and it contains the same software. So that the basic device does deliver a, a, a dashboard. Um, and it's low risk in the sense that you can, you can play with it in the suitcase without risking your production system. And then when you're ready, you can apply it to your own system if you wish to. And then this is a little bit more about the machines themselves. So they, they, uh, they, they run, they break down, they take time to fix. And essentially, as I said, they're discrete event simulators. So I'm giving you an introduction here because we're gonna use these you know, parts of these to actually go through some of the analyses. Um, and this is now moving into the new part, the new, the new work. So uh, there, you know, might be a bit of a bumpy ride. I think that's uh, another little film reference, but uh, this is the last part of, you know, the, the essential bit of Industry 4.0. How do you get value from Industry 4.0? Well, in Australia, 60% of businesses have said that the Internet of Things, there's absolutely no value in it at all. Now, I'd like to know what the UK thoughts are for, for the for iot because clearly these are iot devices by the way um there are some cyber security sets we won't give it, cover those the point is that it's new stuff to think about with industry 4.0 how do you get value for something that's brand new and this is the the key bit because there is no clear value to digitalization and it's not just me that's saying that you will be you'll see that in fact if you've read the the document that i i'd like i <laughs> I don't want to scold anybody. I'm sorry. I, I, if I, if I, if I, if you think I'm scolding, please don't, uh, please don't. But we did highlight that you know it'd be useful to look at this document, and we will ref be referring to this. But there's there's a lot of information in, in documents like this, and you don't have to read between the lines. Is maybe what I'm trying to say. It's actually spelt out, and we'll I'll show that that uh, this this getting value from industry 4.0 is a real biggie, and it's a, a real big. It's a deal breaker, and, and I think that's the that's the that's what we're trying to get to in this one is to try and get that thinking there. And it's hard to do in two hours, I know that, but we'll we'll get there. So I'll shut up and explain. Perhaps the last bit, it's not the core business, of course. So we went through this. The nice thing was the architect realized this, but they pointed out in 2017 that the obstacles to industry 4.0 are not due to lack of technology or a lack of standards now some countries the standards authorities get involved in industry 4.0 the standards are all there so are the technologies no problem the foundations are not in many countries uh, sorry in many companies that's the that's the that's the problem but that's it so that's what what and so what they did is they created this development path they identified these key stages to industry 4.0 and emphasize that there is value at each of these stages. Now, I would argue potentially because they've always said, and it's true that the digitalization is a cost, perhaps perhaps the zero line should be on top of connectivity so that these are actually below, below zero. So they're costs. And of course it costs to do these things as well. But once you have that, this, this difference in value here, I reckon is the first point that value is actually exposed by industry 4.0 and that's making your processes more visible we'll get onto that in a second so that's the red circles here highlight where the factory in a box sits interestingly you'll see I've, I've left out transparency why is something happening i think to answer why is it happening is is actually quite a difficult thing perhaps but it's much more easy to say that when you know your process why is something happening we can predict we can see what's happening we can potentially easily predict what will happen, but the why it's happening is maybe not quite as straightforward. And what happens is in industry 4.0, this is the this is the, the key bit that architects said. Architect have said, this is how we get value from industry 4.0. By an industry 4 gives you value 
by modifying this corporate decision making and adaptation process. So what this is a very long winded way of saying that, that like, like the cost of quality, uh, when you that quality always costs essentially. So what happens is that some you, you're bobbing along nice and nice and normally along here. And then something occurs in your on your on your process or 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 system, an event occurs, and this vertical axis is about the value of value of adaptation. So, if you if an event occurs normally, what will happen? It will take time. This is time the time axis. It will take time for you to work out that something has actually happened, and they're calling it an insight latency. And there we're here now, second blob down. We actually see that that the event has occurred. So now we have to do some analysis. We have to work out how we're going to fix it. And it takes us time to work out what we're going to do. And all the time we are moving down this 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 curve, which suggests we lose that we lose value. So once we've completed our analysis, it takes some time then perhaps for a decision to be made to approve that response and then finally the countermeasure takes effect so now we have lost all of this value that's the concept that all this time we took through all these latencies we lost we lost value and so what they've suggested is that this is compressed the one industry 4.0 does is actually accelerate this corporate decision making and the adaptation process now this is really interesting. So what they've done here is by doing these and removing these latencies is they've, they've shifted these points up this curve. Now, whether the curve should have should have shifted or whether there should be a, an event here and the, and the same curve as before should be, here, I don't know, but of course it's not that good a model. But the point is that, oops, so easy. But the point is that, um, uh, that now we have reduced the latency. So I'm going to just highlight that in a second. I'm just going to move back to the other one here. If you notice this, there's a big drop between the event occurring and the insights and, and when we actually see it happening. And I'm going to just try and say, well, okay, if we're going to focus on one thing, perhaps this, this vertical distance being the biggest is where we should focus. And I think that's going to be clear to us. So, and if we do that, we will see that the, the technologies that, that Akitech identify our real-time capability and systems integration. And they're the things that give us or reduce this latency. Now I'm just, I've put them on the side here. So insight latency is this one. Analysis latency is that one is, is B. C is decision and D is action. Now there's one thing I want to highlight and that's here, the decision-making, they talk about visualization systems as a decision support system. And that's separate from this real-time capability and systems integration. I would actually suggest that that um, visualization is something that we would actually want to be able to do and we can achieve that really quickly. And that's what, if you know, it's the factory in a box, it focuses on visual, visualization of process. And that's actually because I, I would suggest, and then we'll see that shortly, that, um, that the, that's the issue with, uh, with, the, with the toolkits or with the definition of industry 4.0. That's why we end up with this that the vision visualization comes down this downstream. But there we go, we'll get to that in a second. But by the way, the next step here is that we have these maturity stages and they are not linearly spread around these elements, these technology insights. And in fact, I've put on there, if you want to look at real you know, insight, perhaps visibility is the thing. So we've got, we need computerization and connectivity to give us visibility. And that's the first bit, insight A, or in that gives insight. And then the analysis side, potentially then we're looking at predictive capacity and transparency has been the, the tools that are going to, the, 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 the stages that are going to be useful to us in terms of analysis, but also in terms of the concept of, you know, the, these technologies of big data and analytics and machine learning and artificial intelligence. The point is this transparency side is transparency they identify as why did something happen okay and then we have adaptability now possibly adaptability pops in in the decision side of it down here which is the automate in fact it does particularly in because of the talk about automated decision making now 
that is this is the first example of why it's potentially complex and why there are issues with these maturity index tools is that they don't necessarily map nicely together and they they're quite they start to be quite complex all right now it's 9 30 we've had one hour and i think it's time for a five minute break now perhaps it might be also useful because i know we've got a small number of people on here um for 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 you to ask potentially ask, ask questions if you want during the break that on things that have come up from what you've seen is that they're going to be useful good idea you ought to say it's 9 30 p.m ah yes Melbourne. it's 9 30 p.m it's not 9 30 it's it's what is it with you it's it's uh what, what? <laughs> It's early morning, 9.30 p.m. here. I've, I've had a full day's work. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Any, anyone, has this, has, has this raised any issues for you um, in, the, in the first part of this presentation that, that you feel that you need to ask now before we have a little I think, break? I think it's uh, clear from the chat, Steve, that one or two people have just come into this and... Uh, ah. And yes, haven't really, risk. you know, haven't seen the first one. And uh, okay, and all probably, right. Well, look. Yeah. So hopefully, um, <laughs> hopefully, from uh, Lena, um, are you a little bit clear about what this course is about? Um, if I you just give a, if you can just give a summary, that would be great. Um, so okay. Uh, if I if I go back to you, it's the it's that it's the jelly thing. How you industry 4.0, it's about industry 4.0. Okay, essentially hi, industry 4.0. Hi, industry 4.0 is a uh, is 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 banded around as as the savior essentially of manufacturing, essentially. You know, it's an it's the latest and greatest thing. Um and it's a the, the problem with can you hear me? I can hear you. Who was talking? Anyway, so sorry, Lena. Um, Good, then fine. Somebody else is talking. I don't know if you can hear that other person, but um, but yeah, I can hear them. The idea is to take people on an industry 4.0 journey to help you if yeah. you're a, business, a small business owner, or if you're. I mean, what's uh, maybe uh, Lena? What's your what's your 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 background? Are you, what's what are you coming to this from? Uh, my background is material science. Uh, is it like a business model? Is it like a business model you aspire to be in by 2030 or something? Or if the that's day the, gets... that, that's that's the that's that's what uh, the structure the structure of our business should be this fully abstracted sort of not abstract sorry sort of adapted uh, you know lights out factory. It's a smart factory. That's what the vision of Industry 4.0 is in 2030, and that's what people have been sold Industry 4.0 is. But the the thing is that Industry 4.0 is much more than that. Uh, and it's quite applicable right now to, to systems and processes, um, mm -hmm. you know, not just in, and, and the, I guess, um, we're told about Industry 4.0 from a very um, German perspective that, that essentially it was developed from uh, the, the, the need of German industry to remain competitive in the next 20 years or so um and maintain their lead in automation uh where automation in itself is what you might call industry three uh, which would they have done and that industry four would be this adaptable internet of things fully integrated sort of system where you would you know that that products would be made in factories with the lights out and that the systems themselves would be designed to make decisions for themselves and and be adaptable and uh and the products that they make are more are complex and also linked together through their, you know, through each other, through this concept of the, the Internet of Things or the industrial Internet of Things. But the practical aspects of the practical benefits of Industry 4.0 can be, can be achieved really right now without excessive application of, of, of well, with the technology that we have today. And those, and the, and the aim that I'm trying to get over is that we can we can achieve those requirements or, or those those benefits by using very simple systems. The benefits we're going to look at are, are you know, uh, 
the processes that we use and, our, and the products that we make, and we can look at those today and apply the tools that, that um, the Industry 4.0 recommend or talk about or, or push to achieve you know, improved productivity, which is the aim of many companies. Uh, because if your productivity is improved, you are much more competitive. But it's also important to look at the concept of compliance to standards and also um, transparency of your processes and systems. So, you know, if you're, uh, you know, looking at materials, you know, you're looking at sort of, you know, maintaining a, a, a sort of a chain or of, of compliance throughout the production process, for example, you know, uh, looking at, um, at, you know, storing or or having uh, the, the the information about that material or, or system uh, online and, and digitally available immediately. Um, it's also about servitization. It's improving, you know, if you're making something for a customer or a consumer, it's ensuring how can that data or information be transmitted and, and have value. So it, there's a lot of, I guess, baggage around Industry 4.0. And in fact, in Australia, Industry 4.0 is a bit of a dirty word at the moment. You know, because it was, it's, it's actually de it developed in about 20, uh, 2011 and it's become quite a marketing slogan. So that's why, um, you know, this is this, this, this series of talks is actually, you know, aimed at essentially SMEs and essentially people who are uh, manufacturers. But um, uh, that's the, the, the gist of this is to, is to encourage um, the use of technology uh, in the appropriate areas to, um, to, 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 to get into, uh, to digitalize a process, for example. And the, I guess, you know, we could boil it down to, to a single solution in the end, but I want to make sure that people are completely aware of the, uh, of the, of the, of why they're being told something about industry 4.0. That's, that's the aim. Okay, thank you. That's great. Uh, thank you. I think somebody else is trying to... Thank yeah, you. Anybody that's attending and didn't hasn't viewed the first uh, presentation probably should see it yeah. to get a better understanding. Yeah. There's, there's also, so I think someone was talking, it was uh, in the background a little bit. Um, I don't know if there was somebody else wanted to ask a question or was trying to trying to ask a question. There was a, something was a bit quiet on there. I think it was probably somebody unmuted. All right. Shall I, it's, uh, we've had five minutes. In fact, it was a five minute question really, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to the. If Alan, you'd like to say when you want me to start again? Uh, Brett, or... ready to go when you are, Steve. Okay. I don't think we stopped recording. <laughs> okay, you have, to, you have to edit it. Yeah. You have to edit that, that bit. Okay, well, welcome back um, to everyone who's, uh, who's, um, who's, who's with us. Um, so let's crack on with with what we're trying to achieve. I'm trying to give you, uh, and I hope it's not too dry. And I, of course, if it's, if it's something that you're coming to this without an understanding of Industry 4.0, um, I would encourage you to, to uh, review the first, the first uh, presentation. But what, this, what we're looking at now is, okay, we've, we've, I've, I'm sold on Industry 4.0. This vision of Industry 4.0 is something that's gonna be great for my business. Okay, I'm, I'm there, I've bought into that. The thing is, the tools that have been pre presented 
as means of determining what to implement. You know, what do I do next? What is it I'm going to pick? And this part of the presentation is really trying to sort of sort out what you will be tried to be sold, okay? You will be tried to be sold tools to determine your maturity index, tools to determine your current capability, tools that are going to be ones that are going to, you know, try to help you identify what you're doing. I'm trying to try in this to try and find the useful ones for you. But by doing that, I'm going to be reviewing some of the ones that are less useful, perhaps. But it's a journey. And I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> we're going to we're going to share the pain of that journey in a sense when we start to talk about maturity indexes so, so let's move on so we're going to look at this concept of product and process technologies and i think that's where the the one that i recommended for our homework was quite useful um because we need to essentially assess our current capabilities because ultimately a lot of them try to and their aim is to try and find you for you or your consultant to identify what's going to be the best bang for buck in terms of implementation. So let's move on. Let's get the most in the right place. So the tools we're talking about are this maturity index. Now, Architect makes some great documents. The one in 2017 was the one that I was referred to. It's been revised last year and, and republished. And then they've also introduced a, a, a using guide as well, which incorporates case studies, which are very, very good, trends and challenges. So that's worth reviewing. Then we have these implementation guidelines that haven't been adopted, that haven't been modified since 20, 2015, but that's what we're working with. But there's some good points about that one. Um, we'll quickly look at the Fraunhofer IFF checkup. And then I'll show you the future map. And I'll show you it with in reference to the, the Smart Enough Factory. And then I'll bring in this concept of the workshop. The workshops are very important. And you'll see it's very important for all these groups. And then we'll we'll look quickly at their VDMA readiness model. And we may not get all the way through it, but I want to be able to show you that this is a tool that will be useful for you to do some self-assessment with. And it might, it might, your view on it might change, and it but it might you might find it useful. Okay, so we've seen this figure already. Um, and what we've also talked about in quite a lot of detail are these stages, this, these concepts of stages of Industry 4.0. And I think they're, they're, they're real stages. They, they, they're, they're, they, they work as a definition. So digitalization is definitely connectivity and computerization. And they are definitely the precursors to Industry 4.0. So if you think of any process, whether it's a um, insurance policy process, whether it's, um, whether it's manufacturing, um a drill bit you know whether it's uh filling pots with yogurt and creating and and and, and doing that 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 all those processes or you know whether they're you know making a making a you know working a you know by hand an artisan artisanal you know soap manufacturer you know all these things are quite applicable it's, it's not it's not just a fully automated plant okay so these stages of industry 4.0 have been defined and we're quite happy with them we have this understanding of value now the bit that's new that i want to try and introduce i want to give you a very very brief overview because it is super du well i find it super duper complicated to be honest so why am i trying to sell you i'm trying to show you how you can look at this and maybe say well it's not for me or it's for me it might be something that you find is very actually you know it's quite understandable the point is that so what they've done is define this concept of a maturity index. Now, this index is based around this concept of a model of the company, which is in here, a corporation, this enterprise. And this enterprise has a structure. And it has a, in this structure, these, it has these areas we can identify in a structure. And it involves resources, which are the people and the equipment. We have our information systems and our culture as well. And then the way our organization is actually organized as well. So this corporate structure has four structural areas, resources, information systems, culture, and organizational structure. 
and then there are two you can see there's a graph here with two axes and for every single structural area there are two questions that are asked and then you can see this thing like like rings okay these rings represent these stages in industry development so as you move out to, to the outer side of the circle you end up at this six stage this is sort of nirvana i guess of adaptability on the outside edge and those and this is where it gets interesting these are identified by your responses to questions and um, and how you express a particular capability which aren't actually these six layers but that we'll get to that shortly but as well as your structure your company makes stuff and your company has functional areas and these functional areas include marketing services logistics production and development and so for every single production area or functional area you look at the structural at the corresponding structure of those and you rank and rate them or you 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 answer questions potentially that's the that's the way it works is that there's a there's actually a, uh, a questionnaire um, and you end up finding out where you are and where you want to be, just like, just like most tools, and they'll give you uh, that. And it's identified through a series of activities that you'll go through. Okay, so that's the, con that's the concept. So that's their maturity index. So there's... Um, so that's the point. These rings represent where you are. You know, for example, the outer one is this this adaptability area, All right? The spoiler alert is where do you get this questionnaire from? And that's the bit that's the kicker in all these. Let's well, and that's this. That's I'll come to that in the in, a, in the stage. But of course, let's just give some detail in here. If we look at this culture section here, how on earth would you go about identifying where you were? So. Bear in mind that for every single functional area, like production, for example, we can look at the culture in production. So that's what this figure does. Now, this document is a large document, but I've distilled in this figure here um, how each section is represented. So this single quadrant here of culture, which which the two principal questions are about willingness to change and about the social collaboration that your company ex exposes, identify where you are in this quadrant just for production only. Okay, so that's one figure. That's that, This is called figure 20. And this happens to have for one particular capability. Okay, recall back here, there are capabilities A to N of this principle. So this is the principle we're talking about of willingness to change. And this capability, the, will, the, the, the capability is how well does your production area recognize the value of mistakes? How does it, how does it treat an error? Now, in Australia, just a few days ago, uh, we started rolling out our vaccines for COVID-19. And the doctor in Queensland injected and even I know, and I'm sure you all are quite fully aware that these are multi-dose vaccines. Unfortunately, this doctor didn't. And he actually injected an 88 year old and a 92 year old with uh, essentially four doses of, of um, the um, Pfizer vaccine. Now it turns out that's not that harmful. It's just a waste of vaccine, but he didn't follow a process. So there's now finger pointing. There's finger pointing in the parliament of Australia at the moment through some very terrible allegations of of uh, misconduct um, that has been covered up. So errors lead to finger pointing and are often covered up. There's no internal discussion of errors to try and prevent people from taking the blame or being blamed by others. So that's level one, okay? Level one is this inner circle. Level six is all errors without exception are analyzed and appropriate measures taken to address them. Not only that, the effectiveness of these measures is evaluated so that it can be adjusted as necessary. So there's a whole continuum that represent, and this is this is the bit that's that's hard to get your head around. 
This doesn't quite re relate to, you would think, the adaptability of our systems, but what it's to try and do is to look at culture or willingness to change and to actually identify where you are in this willingness to change stage by asking questions about the company attitude to mistakes. So what we have here is the, the layers here. Now it turns out that, you know, you've got these six rings, but actually only one, two, three, four, five questions in this one. And in fact, for social collaboration, there's only three areas to identify where you are. But again, it's going to ho hopefully plot a coordinate in this quadrant. Now, why have I put here on this very busy diagram, this figure here, figure 17. The point is for Akatech, um, this essentially is the happy place. So in terms of culture of our production system, the happy place would be where people and systems are developed so that we have a willingness to change, right? That's what we're, and we, and that's expressed by, we use data-based learning. We're open to invention, in, innovation, sorry. We shape change, okay? And we use continuous professional development. And we recognize the value of mistakes, which is how, and each of those things, those attributes or those, I think the right word would be capability is assessed through questionnaires, right? And again, on the, on the side here, social collaboration, we have confidence in our systems. We have a democratic leadership style and we have open communication. So that's conceptually about uh, the happy place for this company in its culture. And of course, it might not be in this outer ring just yet. It might be somewhere in here. And that's the idea. Now, okay, so how on earth do you find out where you are? And the spoiler is, where do you get this questionnaire from? Oops. This is the issue, isn't it? How do you find? How is that index derived? Where do you get the questionnaire from? Of course, this is where the money trail starts. You get this information by contacting maturity scan at i4omc.de which is the industry 4.0 maturity center which is at arkin university which is a startup we can follow the link and get to it but essentially this maturity scan and we can we can actually do this at no cost we can access this scan and we can do the questionnaire free of charge but the point is that detailed results and the opportunity to discuss the results with our experts are subject to a fee. So that's the money. And in some respects, we can think about Energy 4.0 a bit like um, the gold fields. You can think of them as, you know, the, the, the products and the processes that actually evolve from Energy 4.0, some of them are actually in the region or area of selling industry 4.0 so the new disruptive product is actually perhaps the maturity index itself because it emerges from industry 4.0 now that's a little bit um uh, of a maybe a philosophical view of that but it's actually quite important that um you know this this questionnaire this establishing of where you are is actually quite important to a lot of companies to know where they are in terms of their own sort of knowledge and whatever. But, but that's only the first part of it. The next bit is to say, well, what we're gonna do and what we're going to actually apply, you know, in our business, which is actually in the business of making money, very important to remember that with businesses, that, um, that, it's, that, that we have to get to that, we have to cross that valley here. So that's, um, that's, that's a link to that. Now, the interesting thing next is our toolbox. Now, this is the focus that I wanted to bring into this. This is the, this is where um, we have, hopefully everyone's had a chance to look at this. If people haven't, then um, just, just follow along if you can. And conceptually, it's actually quite similar. But the difference is that this is something that we can do internally. Uh, we can actually do this ourselves. We can actually 
look at our products and our production and we can actually in our products we can see what our customers think of us or what our customers see in our products and that becomes our external representation of where we are in industry 4.0 and if we look at our production can i display the presentation full screen please um okay um can you explain why is it just a bit small So um, just, I'm sorry, Noel. Um, no, it, it, it just came up. Uh, you just did it um, a, a minute. Uh, yeah, there you are. Better. Thank you. Thank I you. haven't touched it. It's been, it's oh. been exactly the same. <laughs> okay. I haven't touched it at all. It's the same as it's been all the time. Thank you. So, so I don't know. You, there might be a, some glitches somewhere, but essentially I'm sharing a region of my screen um, and it, you should see it should be big enough now. Hopefully you don't have any problems now. If I'm moving the mouse around or whatever, and, it, and, it, and you and you get a a, a poor a view of that, then I'm uh, oh, sorry. But yeah, this is essentially the, the I haven't shifted what I've what I've shown. But um, and it could be that it's a bit delayed as well because this is a very, I guess, a graphic heavy. But anyway, so we have our product, which is essentially what what our customers see. Now our production is what we see on the inside, um, and this is. I, w I wanted to sort of ask a question in here, and this is the this is the this is the bit I'll, I'll, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna ask it. And does anyone see anything? And we've had a look at this. Did anyone who's <laughs> maybe it's a small set because everyone's watching online, but has anyone seen anything odd or missing from this? Maybe that's a bit hard to ask. What's not there rather than what is there? And this is a question I'm trying to ask. What isn't there? in terms of in terms of um these lists if you've had a chance to look i'll i'll leave that open question i'll go into them in a bit more detail all right so what it would do is if you have a product and we can look at we can look at a product uh, in fact there's an example of a product here like a bolt that's that's in here which if you're in a bolt if you're a bolt maker it's very important and potentially your bolts, you will know a lot about them and you will you will focus your attention on the production process because it would be very hard to actually apply to your bolt the functionalities for data storage and information exchange within your bolt. Now, uh, you could actually argue, well, okay, perhaps I could actually embed an RFID chip in this bolt in its head somehow. The, the problem with that is potentially it might be very hard to get the, to get a good aerial on there on, and it might be a bit shielded, but, you know, or could you laser mark, if it was a large one, could you actually laser mark a sort of a micro QR code on it? Well, you could possibly do that too. But let's say what happens is that you could say in your product that there's no use of sensors, that this product has no interfaces to interact with. It has no functions we can't monitor the product and the product isn't self-monitoring. It doesn't actually contain any services. And we actually, it, it's not, this, this is the last one, it's an interesting one, it's about servitization. Um, you know, uh, and where we are, we're, right now we gain profits from selling standard products, right? So we don't get any data out of our products, okay? What happens, let's just move along this. And so if you notice at the left-hand side here, we are at this small end of this triangle. So our products are industry three products or standard sort of products. If we move across in any of these features here, it's potentially where we can start to talk about them as being industry 4.0 products. So the a product, let's look at this integration of sensors and actuators. If this product, had no sensors and actuators, if we could add something to it, perhaps, and the interesting thing here is you can see here, we have a temperature gauge here, and we have something here, which is a box, which I guess is some sort of uh, about the product. So the product itself has some temperature sensing within it. So they're integrated within to the product. I mean, a mobile phone has plenty of sensors and actuators in integrated into it. Now, the next step would be that, okay, it's got some sensors in it, but potentially we read them externally. But now 
the sensor data is possibly processed by the product itself. It might take into account something about the, the, temp the temperature. And then perhaps the next step would be that the data, the temperature data itself is evaluated by the, uh, is analyzed uh, by the product. Or at least presents it in some way or stores it for capture, you know, to then transmit possibly. But then finally, an industry 4.0 product would actually be quite smart in a sense. The product independently responds based on the gain data. So if it was temperature based, it could be that it, it did something in response to the temperature. It, you know, <laughs> we can think of plenty of things it might do, but you know, what would it respond to, you know? Um, so that's so that's a concept of, of an industry four product. This, the final column being that concept of adaptability, it does something based on the sensor. The product itself might eventually ultimately be connected to the internet. And that seems to be in this particular definition in 2015, the ultimate communication and connectivity of a product. It's connected itself to the internet. And then we see down here for functionality. So we can go down this list and we can identify attributes of a product of like where it is now. Okay, perhaps we have got a product that has sensors in it, but it's not got an interface. It can be identified individually. Um, we don't monitor it. It doesn't monitor itself. Um, it has no services accessible on it. And we are just selling it on its own. We are not leveraging any of that information. So that could be the exit where we are now. And what we might want to do, we can use this to identify how we expose ourselves. It shows that our industry 4.0 skills and, and um, abilities are capabilities through the capabilities of making a product that has these attributes All right on the right hand side we look at our production so the reason for this split and this is a bit where i want to say when you talk about this oddness of it is that literally this is the product and production system that you saw as the first model with the triangles that we make it that the distinction is made between the production system separate from the products that it makes in terms of how we're going to treat them for industry 4.0 and this production process on the right hand side is the crucial bit that this is actually this automated production system it is not your production system perhaps it is an idealized production system that already incorporates those triangular that triangular layer okay so but the very the first question or the first set of questions here is data processing in the production right so the first one here we got no processing of data the next one here is we store data for documentation Finally, we might analyze it. Then we might evaluate it and use it for process planning or control. And then finally, we actually have an automated system, right? Which actually works out for itself how it plans and does things. I would say the missing layer in this is that perhaps you aren't able to collect data. And what the issue is, I'll, I'll get to the point here is that on the left here is what we what what they call products okay but these products go through a production process and they will go through a production process being carried through that production process via equipment themselves you know and the and the point would be that the sensors that are possibly engaged that are, that are attached in our product we could attach them to our product in a loose manner potentially to collect data within the production system and that's essentially where the smart enough factory comes in because what the smart enough factory is talking about is where we don't have a fully isa 95 described production system where we possibly wouldn't introduce them in the same way of the model that we've been shown, but we would still want to get information from our production system. 
and we don't have to build it into the production system itself. We could build it into a supplemental system. So let's look at production in a little bit more detail. We went down here on the on the left. We looked at the products. Let's look at this one. So what does a standard non-industry four factory look like? Well, in the production system, we don't process our data. We don't have machine to machine communication. We don't have a company wide network. And this is where we get to OT and IT. So, they, so you can see those strategies coming in. We don't, we exchange our information by mail. <laughs> well, actually, we're not quite there, are we? I mean, I don't know if it means email, but we might be, look. I would, I would actually think that uh, potentially email and telecommunications we use, we email people and put them, pick our phones up. And then the man machine interface is that this is the um, HMI. I mean, this is actually human machine interfaces, it should say. Um, no information exchange between user and machine. Okay. And then finally, that this is talking about small batches, batches of one, essentially, we, we would end up with here. So, so rigid production systems. Okay. Now, the, the point is that it's got no processing of data. The bit that's missing is a layer above here where we're talking about integration of sensors and actuators. You could take these headings on the, the talk about products and pop that above here in production. And that's what the smart enough factory does. In fact, that's what the, 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 the implementation of it is, is that we're looking at applying these sensors and actuators at this level here in production, because potentially we're not in a production system where we necessarily need our fully interfaced field bus by field bus devices but we do want to for management purposes want to collect and that's monitoring as well as you know productivity and whatever we do want to incorporate that and the point is that this description of a production system is based around that iso 95 in fact you can even see it part way down here where you see these triangles this is this is literally iso 95 defined in here we can apply these concepts on the left that are applied traditionally well god they talk about traditionally that the where where the industry four definition from germany forces us to think about them as product based tools we apply those to our production system and this is the bit that's what i want to try and make it the novelty of the of the smart enough factories we take what essentially are product based technologies and apply them to our production system which means that we don't have to create an enterprise service bus or all the complexity in production that you would have with a fully automated system if we don't need that and we can get the benefits of industry 4.0 by looking at these product based services and and systems and apply them to production and that if i had to stop anywhere and say no more about this would be where i would finish because that is essentially what the smart enough factory does but i want you to take you further than that i want to i want to get you thinking about you know because if you work with a company and you come up with an idea potentially you'll find that your idea isn't necessarily valued you might have to get a consultant in to tell you that as well for it to be believed it might have to cost money for you to be to do that but the point is that small and medium enterprises don't necessarily have that luxury and the concept of this is to try and get small and medium enterprises to think about industry 4.0 to think about what will actually be a benefit for their business and how to apply the tools and techniques of industry 4.0 that exist right now into their systems so i'll climb off down off that hobby horse and i will tell you about this we could potentially look at the VDMA guidelines and we could take this product. Now, this is actually, I, I wanted to try and look at this potentially, but this is actually the actual difficulty. Now, this is the, the VDMA guidelines sounded great, didn't they? You know, they, they're actually, they're internal. We can do that. We can, we could, as a company, if we were a company, we could sit down at a table and we could identify the experts that we want to involve and we could actually nut this out what becomes a problem is where does the product start and stop this is a system this is a, this this 
Factory in a Box is a product, but it represents a manufacturing system. It's a fairly complex product. It's not difficult, compl uh, uh, complex and complicated are two different words, but it's complex in the sense that it's got multiple components in it. So if we were to look at a product, are we talking about this as a product? Because this is a product. If we focused on this as the product, we would have one type of description of our of our technologies and, our, and where we are. If we took this as a product, maybe connected to this as our product. Well, let's just forget that. We can actually look at this as individual as a product, say this device as a product, or the whole thing. Where does the product stop? This actually represents a production system. We could analyze this in terms of the production system that it represents. That's perhaps easier. But again, where would we be? The point, the other thing to just bear in mind here is we can identify here a, uh, a QR code that takes you to the uh, Confluence website. That takes you to the documentation. It's got a digital twin, but it's actually even, even though this I would suggest is one of the more straightforward tools to apply in your company, you would have to be quite clear about how you're applying it. And we'll get to the answer that the, 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 these toolkits have answered that question for us, actually. But we'll get to that in a second. The point is, this is a bit about the guideline. The, the thing is, I will quote you from this, all right? And this is actually some of the questions that everyone still has and will have. Industry 4 is regarded as a challenge, right? Not as a chance or enabler for new models, right? And the problem is that and this is the bit where we, we can't define industry 4.0. This, this document states explicitly states that every company has to create its own view of industry 4.0, right? That's an interesting concept, isn't it? That everyone has to, every company has to their, have their own view of industry 4.0. This is a bit what I'm saying, Matt, you have to get opinionated. It's about your product and your production and how to develop their own ideas, right? For new potentials. And this is a kicker, isn't it? Spelt out, can the question Q, can industry 4.0 be used to earn money? Now I'm, I've been involved in, um, in uh, as an academic many years ago. And for the last, goodness knows how many years now, uh, in actual, in manufacturing and the difference between a university and a company is, well, okay, maybe not, not entirely. Each of these organizations needs, needs to earn money to put food on the table, to employ people and to keep the factory doors open all the time. So the thing is, it certainly does make the world go around, but as a small and medium enterprise, if you are going to invest money, it had better give you a return. And they spell out explicitly, Industry 4.0 in itself does not represent any value. They don't even, they don't even sugarcoat it. They just state that blatantly. The point is, and what, and this is the, this is the other problem. They say that Industry 4.0 can help companies. Okay, so, so that's it. They say that, that, that's it. So what happens is that you spend money, it's no value in itself, it's intrinsically invaluable. There we are. So, so, so Nesta is actually, that's great. You see, that's what I'm getting to, that, that this is the point that Industry 4, they say their view of that is it reduces the cost of their own production. So, so if you think of this purely in, this, in the model sense of production on one side and product on the other side, they only say that you can now actually reduce your cost of your production, right? You can make your production more efficient by applying industry 4.0 principles. They can also say that you can enhance and increase sales through making the products more useful and provide value. So servitization, for example. But my argument is that your production is not just about reducing costs. It's also about improving your quality through improving your compliance. So there's two things. They identify just one reduced cost. I think that's unfair or uh, unnecessary. Now, of course, Nestor is saying 
it can earn money by different approaches, cost saving, forecasting, fast decisions. Absolutely. That's what I tried to spell out there, that it's identified with, with that uh, reduced latency on decision making, faster decisions, forecasting. Yes, making better decisions, cost saving through through um, through reducing time in production or, or establishing where things are. But that's it. But in itself, just by doing this, you've got to actually lean forward and do those things. You can apply digitalization and not get value from it because intrinsically it's it doesn't provide value. You have to respond to it. So that's the point. So Ness is, in, it's, Ness is just shortcut that, 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 but the point is that the tools that you will look at, you have to realize that itself is not, it doesn't have value. And, but I think that this guideline in itself actually is incorrect. What does it do? How do you actually, if you were to follow this, I would suggest that this is one of the easiest ones to follow. It involves creating a project team to identify potentially in, in various stages, this, 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 these, these goals, right? And so I've highlighted that they, I've covered this, that the, the guidelines use the products and the processes to determine the internal and external capability of the business. The thing is the implementation stage, the crucial bit, implementation. What implementation in this particular case is not making it, doing it, it's actually examining it further or presenting it to company management. Let that sink in for a minute, that your work here is, in, is actually done to, in, to ensure that the company itself, that all in one team concept that you can take the company on. Now that's, that's fine. Now, this is a quote from a paper that reviewed this strategy. Detailed strategies for the implementation of Industry 4.0 are dispensed with. Guess who said that? Fraunhofer. They have analyzed this VDMA guideline, not the Fraunhofer one, a competitor, and have said that it's, I uh, forget, they, 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 they don't bother with strategy. It's true, they don't, All right? But that's still not the purpose of this activity, All right? But the point is that this is a nice, it's also a nice paper, by the way. So it's, it's a journal paper, uh, sorry, a conference paper. Um, and it's about developing an industry 4.0 maturity index for small and medium sized enterprises. So the point is that this is something that you can do. And the big thing in the middle is this workshop. We'll come to that in a bit. But the establishment of the preparation, it's, it's a team you put together within the company. You identify your competencies. Um, and you look at internal projects potentially, and then you get together in a workshop and you create ideas and models based on the toolkit, which you then evaluate together in the workshop with all employees. But then your project team looks at creating the, an application for implementation. Right, now well, let's move on to that. Now this, I will give you a quick flavor of this paper. This paper actually says what SMEs want. SMEs want to know their capability, right? But the point is they, 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 if you're gonna measure it, they want some requirements and they identify that it shouldn't cost too much. It shouldn't take too long to do. It should have our company objectives in there. It should give us significant results. It should show us where we are. It should actually not just say where you wanna be, but it should actually put us in the position, which actually find out where we are with the rest of industry, right? It should give us support to interpret the results. It should be, um, you know, it should allow some independent development of actions out of this thing. And it shouldn't need specialist knowledge. It should be easy to understand. And they'd like it to be internet or a software-based one that's, that can, you can do yourself. Uh, no idea what this is. This is really interesting, right? It was a figure they presented in the paper. It said, I don't know whether it should go on to 10 or what, what's good, but what it, it says cost utility analysis of five capability and maturity indexes. You can bet your bottom dollar that, um, that uh, guideline and um, the architect maturity index is one of these ones here. But it said the analysis revealed that none of the existing models meets the need of SMEs. So right in 2017, none of the models themselves actually was any good about capability maturity indexes. So what is good but what can you do about it in fact actually the output of the paper was i've got to say was that they developed a thing called the quick checkup 
right? So IFF Fraunhofer has this concept of checkup, right? And they developed quick checkup, which satisfied SMEs. I can't find any reference to quick checkup at all in Fraunhofer, right? What you can find is their existing checkup, right? And the analysis of, of checkup takes anywhere from one to three months. And of course, it's not free. But the point is, this is perhaps a more realistic outcome. Now, if I, I put this red box, that's my red box here. And it's important to see who is doing the thinking and the analysis. This is what you want as a consult. You want to pay somebody. <laughs> and that's what Fran Offer suggests is that you pay us and we will complete a checkup by an experienced team of technology and process engineers who will use methods that have been modified for the requirements of industry 4.0 and they will take one to three months and they will actually give you an analysis uh, of your company's capability and maturity all right so why would you bother the point is that finally they you they say that if you make a partnership with us we will get you to a factory of the future and it will be adapted for your company and you will maintain your innovativeness and a competitive edge. So the whole point of this, of all these things as we get to, is we end up with a workshop. Perhaps it's a bit meta, isn't it? This is a workshop, of course. But on the left here, we have the workshop about this part here. This is the workshop of our, this is straight out of our guideline industry 4.0, where we are in this workshop, perhaps, we're trying to talk about a workshop of a workshop here, okay, by the way. I feel like, hopefully you like that on a morning. But the point is that um, this is the aspect where together you would generate ideas, right? So the workshop is center stage, actually, from the guideline industry 4.0. It's center stage for Fraunhofer. And it's center stage for the architect maturity index. The evaluation takes place on site at the company, a tour of the site in, allows the initial impression to be formed of how our processes work. The processes are then evaluated in the workshop where the status quo is analyzed based on the order management process. So don't forget, a lot of these ones involve a workshop. Now, if you can organize that yourselves, that's fantastic. And that's the aim is what I'm trying to get to. And ultimately what we'll show, or wanna show in the next one is that all well, it's an all roads leads to Rome in a sense that that once we go through all that, the outcomes of what are required that companies identify as requirements out of all these workshops and all these naval gazing things actually start to converge again. And they converge on something that's a product like the smart enough factory, like the factory in a box concept. That's what they start to converge on. So I wanted you to take you through this. Now, the last part of this activity well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly I'll quickly show you the future map. I'm sorry, but this is this is a very similar one. This is actually this was actually the reason for showing you this is that this is the IMCRC. It's a registered trademark there, and it's a diagnostic tool for SMEs. So there will be a UK equivalent one as well, I'm sure, and that is allows SMEs to assess their current state of business and identify areas of focus and potential investment to transform and future proof their business. Are you seeing a pattern emerging here? I hope. I hope you are. And this is what I'm trying to, I'm, I'm bashing you around the head with this, but I think it's very important to see. <laughs> and this full set, the circle will be closed. This is actually developed by Fraunhofer, licensed to IMCRC. So Fraunhofer are telling you about this. Um, uh, VDMA are telling you about the other thing. Uh, the uh, Agatech is involves Fraunhofer and Arkin. So the same players are telling you in different ways about the same the same tools. And I've just got cramp in the back of my leg, which I hope won't get in the way too much. But the point of this is that we can see, we can assess there are, there are 12 or 13 areas of competencies, right? Very, very similar, you know? It, but it doesn't just talk about the product or the production, which is what the guidelines do. It takes us all, all the way out to leadership and the market as well. So, okay, then well, the idea of that is that this is the reality. This is, as I showed before, we actually work out where you are right now and where you wanna be in two years. What it provides though, unfortunately, 
is uh, some opportunities for development, but they are only uh, sort of text-based. So it provides you with some information on leadership and strategy and industry 4.0 awareness. So if you weren't aware of industry 4.0, you know, essentially you can then read a magazine. Great. Uh, or an article down here. So if you notice these, these resources are actually quite high level. Now, why is that? I ask you, or you, you might ask the point is again, this is an area where it's to focus the management of the company to, to, to sort of understand that this, in fact, industry 4.0 awareness is actually only one aspect of this maturity here. The organization and the industry for utilization is a different kettle of fish. So it can only sort of provide you with certain fields or certain areas. Again, the aim of this is to try and look at, look at your organization and, it's, and, it, and it says specifically, it's not a comprehensive or definitive analysis of your competitive position or maturity of your business. It's intended as a guide as to where you may look now to focus and where you may wish to collaborate with other supporting organizations. So again, it's a means to an end. It's not actually, it doesn't actually give you any, any implementation information. That's the, that's the issue. So implementation is lacking in all these tools. Again, the VDMA readiness model. What I, what I will do here is show where you get where you get to this. Now, <coughs> I did mention that um, VDMA stopped essentially with this guideline in 2015. It's it's it exists and it's still there and it's and it's I think it's relevant, very relevant. But this now, what's going to happen if I click on this link? It will. Uh, I'm only sharing a, sc a screen, so it won't actually pull that up. So. Uh, it's a different, it'll be a different application. And so we've lot, so you won't see this. I could reshare that, but that is literally the, the link up to the website. So the, the idea was that we would look at that for the factory in the box. Now, I don't think it's a, it's actually appropriate because it really requires a lot of feedback to do that. But essentially I would recommend that you click through this and read this uh, you can do it we can repeat it let's 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 perhaps let's perhaps give you a flavor in the last five minutes of this because it's literally the, the 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 end of the presentation and i will i will do this but what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually change what i'm sharing um and i'm going to share uh the readiness check in firefox and i will hope that you can actually see uh firefox now and I'll make that a bit bigger. Uh, actually, no, what I want to try and do is get it a reasonable size, which is not too big and not too small. So that's a reasonable looking screen. I might just make that narrower so we don't lose anything. Okay, that's resized. So that is, that's a good size, hopefully for your monitors. So this is what you're presented with. Um, it will give you, it's an online self check. So we can actually start it here and it tells you whether it will look at, you can actually find out where you are. And this is the bit which is missing in a few others. This tool is actually quite useful because it, it, it will show you based on the data it's collected already where, where you position yourself. Again, it's self-assessment, but it will position yourself with your competitors, okay? Or, or sorry, your peers, maybe the peers is a better word. So we have these dimensions, strategy, smart factory, smart operations, your employees, data driven services and your smart products. And so I'll just start this. Oh, actually, do you know what I'll do? Uh, I'll start it and show you what it, what, what it does or what you're pre presented with. So it's into six dimensions again, all different from the previous ones, you know, not quite the same, but similar. We will just honk through it. So you actually are presented with a lots of, um, uh, category questions about where you are um, and your size. 19 is actually a very interesting number. Your turnover um, and then the organization. So how would you describe your implementation strategy of industry 4.0 from no strategy to strategy implemented? So you will, um, well, so I'll formulated one, but I haven't implemented it yet. We click through. Um, 
do you use indicators you know kpis i would guess well actually do you know what uh no we don't actually have a we don't know how far we are there so we we, we do all this and then we can see that we are only a certain way through this presentation so it tells us about the technologies well i use rfid i use sensors i've got some well real-time location systems i don't use big data but i've got i use cloud technologies machine and machine communication as well embedded it systems yeah we'll do that and so what it's trying to do is question you on on um you know on your investment and where you are in in terms of your implementation and the aim is to end up with this document so um all right so let's get the document sorry everybody let's so let's find that and i'll share that screen um uh, Uh, maturity scan. Nope. I managed to. There we go. So this is the one I want to share with you now. So, so what it, what your output is. Um, so thank you. Uh, Doug, there's uh, some people having to leave for tutorials and things, but let's, let's find this. I will share this thing. So new share, and that's going to be uh, the um, uh, file explorer industry for redness. Here we go. All right. So what you end up with is a document uh, with your redness check level, and it says that I'm an intermediate um, company when I ranked myself. So this is a nice thing. Uh, it says out of does it give us how many? Um, how many organizations am I compared against? Well, it basically puts me here. Um, it tells me about my smart factory. Now that's quite interesting. I did this because I produced the, the kits essentially by hand. So I haven't got a smart factory, but I have a, my, our employees are at level four experts in industry 4.0. So, and we have a, a smart operation and our products are relatively smart but they're beginner smart. So, and we can see that I think that's quite a useful thing. So I would recommend that, that you use this. And the interesting thing about it, about it is that it actually shows where we are or where, where my company is in terms of um, mechanical engineering groups with up to 99 employees. And you'll see and the interesting thing about doing this activity, and I hope you can see that well enough on your screen, is that these graphs show that the that about 45, almost 50% of companies that have taken part in this evaluation checklist are at level zero. Nearly 50% level zero. Let's keep going with that. Just let's just let's just go down the rest of them. Level zero, 50% of companies. Level zero, 60% of companies in strategy and organization. Level zero. Industry 4.0 strategies. 65% were smart factory level zero. I'm in that 65% for my smart factory, right? Look at who's in level five. No, none. Look at this distribution there. Right. This is an interesting one. Why we've got this. There's a lot of people in level zero. It's by, by mode or whatever. We've got Level zero, 44%, level two, 4%. I'm in this level one for smart operations. Not many people in that. They're either non or they've got level two. Okay. But the nice thing is there's some, this is a bit like a, um, what would you call it? A horoscope. Your company does not yet have any use case in which the workpiece guides itself autonomously through production. Correct. I don't. Run an analysis of your production to determine whether it makes sense to introduce autonomous control partner with other companies so the useful thing about this is they don't they don't just you, well there's two things they are you identify yourself where you are in terms of other companies that have taken the taken the test or taken the the questionnaire they give you ideas ideas that you could implement but they don't tell you how to implement that, that maybe they can't maybe they can't actually tell you how to implement it. it's much a much more complicated thing but the point is that 
but um, you know, it also tells you also what you do know. It says you are not currently using any cloud-based data analytics, cloud computing or cloud-based software. Well, actually I am using cloud-based software, but I'm not doing any cloud-based data analytics, unless you call a database data analytics. I actually do that with the data locally to some respects. So look, the interesting thing is that it's worth doing these, these things as a company to work out what, you know, or which jelly you're gonna nail down, right? That's the pin about this thing. But I wanted to show you that as the last part of this presentation um, on useful tools, right? This is the Impulse Toolkit. I've just stopped sharing. I'll go back to sharing the, um, uh, the, the presentation. So that was the checklist. That's what we did. Okay, so this this is now what we've been doing. So that what I presented where was was um, doing that analysis, just giving you the output rather than going through the analysis itself, but showing the output. I applied it to the Smyrna factory. I used the the, the factory in the box as a product. And uh, the thing was, I, I found that the digital twin of that, which is the confluence or the digital shadow, was actually quite hard to actually articulate that within the within that within that model. But that essentially is is what what we can do with uh, the Smyrna factory. And and I would suggest rather than you know using um, a made up factory, you actually do it with you actually apply this with tools that, with your own products or with, with processes you're familiar with that you're doing and see if you can actually get any useful information out of that. So the last workshop, what we're we going to do next? This is the important, well, okay. I think this is actually quite important. I think the work that we've done in this one, I think if you can do this activity, I think, uh, and, I, uh, and, and actually take that, take that, go on that journey of identifying you know where you are in terms of these concepts of industrial point right? and actually I, I must admit i must i must state that when we look at this you'll find that part of that preparation for the workshop is actually getting together with the people that you're going to do the activity with and actually and putting your own definition and actually getting your own understanding of industry 4.0 and that's what this first workshop will do i think the first the, the sorry the first the first presentation that we did talks about industry 4.0 what it's actually about you know about about the concept of sensors and actuators and the concept of the company as a, an enterprise and, and the products has been on these layers but but within that you will i think this actually has enough to grasp those concepts and what we're going to do ultimately then in the final workshop is to say and it's a question that i posed in the first one is what can you do with one bit and i will show you what you can do with one bit and it's a significant amount of things. And I'm going to show you how to nail up this jelly in the final workshop. Okay, so I think I've got, oh, I am five minutes over time. Sorry, I'm actually going to rattle on with that last bit. Seven minutes over time. Okay, I'm going to give my acknowledgements to all the partners that have involved with them with uh, with creating this, the capstone students. And I think that's very important that a lot of this work was done with students, students that weren't, that hadn't graduated, so, so undergraduates. Um, and I think that uh, there's also certain tools, of course, and work integrated learning students throughout the years to, to acknowledge. But the this the work was funded by the Defence Materials Technology Centre, and the Manufacturing Growth Centre, RMIT, and the University of Queensland. Whew. Okay, well, I've misquoted this, but I'm going to leave it up there. Digital thinking will one day be as necessary for efficient citizenship as the ability to read and write, according to H.G. Wells. So the future, the workshop for the last one is to, to look at to look at your own company or your own, not just your company maybe, but your own process that you're involved with, even if it's a work process at, at, uh, at a university and try and think about how you could actually use the tools, especially the guideline tools or the VDMA online tool and actually assess where it is in terms of um, industry 4.0 maybe even thinking about your department and trying to sort of see if, you, if that's there but that's it thank you and i and i will have to stop talking